So two million naira doings, don't turn battling. God, I beg, I don't want to be a mechanic. <laughs> I want to be a baller, so, I'm telling you shout guys. Shout out to Free Did on TikTok, yeah. All right, all right. So, guys, look, right. Um, we we've been seeing your comments. Don't act like we don't see what you guys are saying to us on, on the on the on the Instagram feed, TikTok, and YouTube. And today, we're going to do something very interesting. We're going to read through your comments, and we'll let we'll let you know what we think about your comments, and we'll also just shoot the breeze about it. So, S, what what are what are some of the things our our loyal audience have been have been saying on 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 our comment section? So obviously we had a, a viral video with Godfrey. Okay. Yes, yeah. we, we had over four hundred thousand views on on TikTok. Oh wow! And the comments we we have over six hundred and fifty comments on here. Over six hundred and fifty comments. Oh it's my god! It's a bit god. mad. So in that clip, Godfrey was talking about how he uh, was throwing a party mm. and how he had some guys on the side that were battling with um, a two million naira. <laughs> While he also had some other guys on the side that had sources of questionable money yeah. and they could clear 50 million naira easy. So <laughs> comments was obviously like a war. Oh, wow. So, so one poor soul said... <laughs> poor soul. <laughs> so two million naira doings don't turn battling. God, I beg. I don't want to be a mechanic. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be a baller. So, I'm telling you, shout guys. Shout out to Free Did on TikTok. Yeah. Free don't did. let the pressure Don't let the pressure pressure you, you man. Some of, this, some of these guys, you don't know what they're doing to get that money. Trust me. Okay. A lot of people that are really working hard yeah. right now, the club is not even where they want to be Fact. because they're saving their money for a goal they're trying to achieve. Exactly. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't let that, um, yeah, don't let that get to you. Get to you. Another person said, these can't, these guys can't be in the same club with us. Where they spend 5k, wake up in the morning and just think about your life. <laughs> that <was> nice. <laughs> no, that is funny. No, 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 no. There's a lot of people in that boat, but listen, if you, if you have your humble 5k, you spend it when you go out, have fun with your friend, mm -hmm. be proud of that shit, man. Don't let, don't let those people spending 50 million in the club deceive you, man. Yeah. So what what have you got on the on my side? Uh, okay, so I, I'm just picking the random random ones right now. So, uh, Lamre X eighty one said, uh, "This is the best." Uh, in, in, in referring to the related episode, mm -hmm. it was like, "This is the best analysis that I've seen ever that have, that I've seen ever about Nigerian real estate." Shout out to Lam Lamrex eighty one. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that was a very good episode. I learned good, a I like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I learned a lot because, especially, uh, I think it's Toby O. Mm. You know, some, there's one thing that, you know, that person we have in common. He say, he's always saying Nigeria is actually a very legislated environment. Mm -hmm. Just because we as civilians tend to be quite lawless. There mm. actually is laws for things. Like yeah, he yeah. told me that apparently if you if they catch you reversing on the road, mm. yeah, you know how you want to drive on the wrong side <laughs> of the road to just shorten your time. He goes, if they catch you, apparently it's part of the law that they will check you do a medical uh, mental health evaluation on you. Really? Yeah, to check that you're in your mind. Why do they, do, 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 they do that for everybody in, in general? <laughs> so Toby was talking about a lot of laws that there is it within real estate. Uh, it's just a shame that we don't follow it. Mm. So yeah, it was a good it was a good breakdown. It was a good breakdown. No, that's right. So another comment just here saying um, uh, I think I think there was some comment about um, what's his name oh, Godfrey. Godfrey saying is that Godfrey's line is capping about his uh, uh what he said, but I guarantee you, uh, I've seen it, I've seen it in my person as well. I've seen people spending a lot of money in the club, so I don't think that's a cap. No, not at uh, all. And it says fifteen million really close their faces like uh people no. are spending more than that. Yeah. So on TikTok there was a video where uh, Godfrey spoke about how IJGBs, those of us that come from abroad back mm. to Nigeria, we're very stingy. We're very tight. <laughs> so our fellow IJGBs from the UK, we got quite a few comments. Oh, on that they video. came in. They came in yes. to fight back. Oh, I like that. I like so, that. So, Jola Ife Dolapa on TikTok was like, with all the tax and monthly rent I pay, there is no chance to waste money. 
Which is facts. a fact. True. There, there's a lot of there's a lot of payment outgoings there, man. Yeah. So that was the, that's the problem with that. So another person, Stephanie. Stephanie said. Stephanie Alegbear said. Lol. Even in the UK, we buy shots. Mm. After working a twelve-hour shift in a care home, you expect me to come and buy a zoo? I beg. <laughs> yeah, I beg. Dead ass. I, buying a zoo in London, you're 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 either doing something uh, questionable or just not you're a baller. So so I mean, it's not it's not really uh, the norm for average person to. Mm-hmm. To, to kind of be spending money in a club like that yeah um a comment here from from paul's episode around um best places to eat in lagos okay so some obviously he said absolutely somebody else said it's very underrated a nice place yeah and guess what i did i went there just to test it out okay i was disappointed really yeah, talk to me what was it like so uh, you know me uh, like, we like nice things don't uh, we? yeah i like nice things but it's still like i, I still appreciate things that are of value right yeah so I walked in, they had the arts on the wall. The seating arrangement was was relatively okay. Yeah. Um, but it was I felt a bit uncomfortable in the seats. I didn't feel like I could sit down and eat. I felt, mm-hmm. I felt like very tight. Also, I ordered for food and it just tasted very normal. I don't like that. I just just like there was no any genocide. Didn't wow there you, no nothing, wow. No, yeah. It was just like a normal food. So it's I just like, said, um, it's no. not really no. it's not really it doing this stuff for me. Um, yeah, what else you see? So, um, there was a time that you know, our video, one of our favorite videos that we did alone, where you said that everybody in Nigeria needs a therapist. Yeah, so Mania on TikTok said, even therapists for this country need therapy, which is <laughs> 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 like just shows so how sad, me, yeah, you know, what is, man. that's <laughs> facts. That is absolutely ah. This is Nigeria, you therapist, man. Yeah, another person said, "Who has money for therapy?" I'm like, "Yeah, I hear that. I hear that." No, it's true. Like, yeah, people are barely trying to survive. So, like, but then again, the government should offer that for free, man, because people need that stuff in this country. What would the criteria be to offer free therapies for you? Um, uh, the criteria for who from, from the government? Because we or... can't give everybody free therapy. So, what would your criteria be? Yeah, I mean, anybody that has that been diagnosed with with any mental issues, like it needs to be a, it needs to be a diagnosis first, right? Yeah. Um, I feel there's kind of a huge amount of mental health issues in this country that's not being addressed, mm-hmm. um, and there should be um, a, a a kind of uh, open diagnosis mm. where people can come in, or they can if someone is perceived to have mental health issues, they can be invited in. I have mental health issues after moving back to this country, boy. <laughs> My mental health is in the gutter. <laughs> This country has nearly run me mad. So yeah, but yeah. I feel like everybody here, everybody in Lagos, you know, Lagos is very different to the rest of Nigeria. Facts. That's why it's very important to just go and get catch a break sometimes. Mm-hmm. So yeah, Lagos, I feel like a lot of people here, the life is so fast and aggressive. A lot of them have mental health issues. Um but yeah. yeah it's a lot of human issues. Um okay. So I mean, we've been getting a couple of, um, I mean, not really messages, but that Banga Soup, um, <laughs> that Banga Soup episode mm. made me laugh. Mm. So this is when, when I was talking about um, getting too much. Seven so I was soup. talking about something very serious <laughs> and how I spoke about that a lot of the reason why men in Nigeria are hypersexual is because they were actually sexually abused as a young child. So they got touched by the house help or the nanny at a young age, which makes people hypersexual. This guy sits back and like, <laughs> I disagree, man. <laughs> we'll run the clip for you. Uh, yeah, they run the clip. Like that. Yeah. But yeah, I think I think somebody wanted to know more about the podcast from there. That was quite interesting. Um, and then other people are there sharing their experiences, um, talking about the, someone said me, I moved back. I've never lived in Nigeria. I must say it's not that bad at all. So some people who are moving back and I think that Nigeria is not that bad as people make it to be. That was me um, when I first came. So Jen, this is a Jennifer Ade. Mm-hmm. Jennifer Ade. Shout out Jennifer. Hello Ross. Yeah. Join Hello our Ross, group man. chat. Come on. Let yeah. us know, um, any support you need. We'll, we're here for you. IMB Concierge is also there for you if yep. you need any specific help. Nah, this this video, you were speaking about how you were working your job, your London job yeah. from here. Oh, and yeah. And they took light, yeah. Working from home. So there's halfway Zoom calls. <laughs> and I got fired. Yes. <laughs> so Kende David said, this thing actually made me lose my first job. 
Ah, someone gone through that experience yes. as well. All right, shout out to get uh, yeah. bro, we, we can relay on that, man. Yeah, I'm telling you. He literally said that he lost his job because of the fact that the electricity and the internet <laughs> was like <laughs> coming on and off. And yeah, I've experienced that. Like when I first came, I had to have my mobile hotspot on deck because really? 100% when the internet cuts Goes out, off, the light yeah, comes you out. To, you have to, to, you to get it on, yeah. And that's where the inverters come in as well because an inverter will give you light for a bit longer yeah. if you haven't got solar at least. Shout out to Pam Africa. Shout out to Pam Africa. No, there's there's definitely a lot of, couple, a lot of things here. Um, oh, look at the pillow. I don't even know what that means. So, um, Somebody, um, IBK, one of our previous guests, Ibu mm. Kun Adeniyi, he spoke about how in his day, Shawarma was how a lot of people started making money. Mm. Now it's Uber, but before then, to get cash flow, he spoke about the importance Shawarma, of yeah, cash flow, and he talked yeah. about Shawarma. So there's a comment here by Divine that's saying, okay, now I'm doing Shawarma. She hopes that she'll now become successful too. I, I really hope you become successful yeah. too, because stick to your craft, man. If you're doing Shawarma... From there, you can graduate to doing uh, premium suya. Mm -hmm. From there, you might graduate to doing um, one nice joint, let's say farm city or something like that. And then before you know it, you're, 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 you're the talk of the town. So mm -hmm. uh, if that's what you're you're doing, I mean, stick here, get a cash flow, invest into other businesses yeah. where you can mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah. I've got um, so I, I've got one more here. Mm -hmm. uh, this, is, um, this is an episode about marrying, marrying black. Yes, where the lady said uh, rich black men are not marrying black women, mm -hmm. right? And and um, which I obviously disagree, but I think somebody commented said, "You expect rich black men to marry black ladies, while black ladies aren't ready to marry broke black men." Um, mm. And then obviously the comment was interesting. I mean, you, you replied back on the thing saying interesting, and I I think that's quite a, that's an interesting take. Uh, but I, I definitely said it, it, it's, it's not a race thing in that specific context yeah i think it's more to do with women's preference in men uh, having having wealth anyway and uh, men of status so i would i would say that uh, if we remove race out of that 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 uh, question is that statement is still valid his where, statement, his reply. Yeah, that but, women wouldn't want to be with broke men. But her statement, you do you, you do you remember you gave an anecdote that added valid validity to what she said, mm. which was that when you were with your ex girlfriend, people used to come to you to be like celebrating black love because black love was a yeah, rarity true. in the city. Yeah, yeah, sure. So I think people step sidestep that topic that she raised, but there's an element of truth to it that as you go higher up mm. in the hierarchy for black people in the UK. The color of their of their girlfriends or their wives mm. also does become more towards the lighter the or, or the white side. Yeah. yeah. So, so so I mean I mean that's that's a very good point. Um, I I do I, I do see that happen. I don't know if it's is is if it's the uh, minority or the majority. I don't think it's I don't think it's the majority. Um, I think it's a minority group of black people that marry outside of the race. I used to say something very controversial, but it's going to get me in trouble. But sometimes I say, yeah, that sometimes you're not facing colorism. You're mm. facing uglyism. Mm. And it, it's, it sounds mad. But the thing is, yeah, there's some, the beauty, there's some very beautiful, beautiful, beautiful chocolate babes have no issues getting men. And especially one mm. thing I'll say, if you are facing it, Nigeria, the men, they love the chocolate yeah, love queens you, yeah. here. Just come to Nigeria. If you're not getting the attention you want in If UK, you're on Nigeria. the thicker side or your or your features are not celebrated, Nigerian men will appreciate, they appreciate they have, like they have more taste chocolate, and variety. dark skin queens better than anybody. Mm. So, but yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's a... Someone said, when you're drugged up on Uma Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Dr. Uma, man. <laughs> hey, this shout is Sammy411. Yeah, shout out to Sammy, shout, 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 that's shout, funny. Shout out to Dr. Uma. <laughs> no, there's an element of truth. There's an element of truth to everything. I won't even deny it as well. Some of the things I've mm. experienced, you start to realise some people are a bit too fixated on skin yeah, tone yeah, in this yeah. generation. And so, we're all black, so. Mm. Someone said, how does one get a job in the UK from Nigeria? This is where IMB Concepts really comes in, really. So they want to get a job in the UK? Mm, from Nigeria. So... 
yeah, there's IMB Concierge. I can give you a couple of websites so far. Mm. You, there is, there's websites you can use, such as AngelList. You can use platforms like Crossover, although those ones are for the US. Mm-hmm. You can use, uh, there's you, there's a couple. Reach out, reach out. Mm. Use the Concierge service, reach out because yeah, there reach is... reach out. Yeah, use the Concierge service. We might um, send you some links that you can help in you fact, out. In fact, this does lead us to an announcement that's coming soon. Ooh. We have Japa services coming soon for you guys. Hey, we'll watch out for that. Watch out yeah, for that. We'll, so we'll, we'll we do have a that announcement. Later yeah, we'll do a proper on. announcement so and we'll that, to, Japa, to the UK. We have that you, coming. Um, so. This someone said, um, as someone who literally moved back this week, this podcast is exactly what I need. Shout out to Where's Wumi. Yeah, this is exactly what we do. Yeah, um, and we want to make sure it's easy for you as your as you have your stay or move back to Africa or Nigeria specifically. Yeah. Um, anyone come from your end? So there's one here. You talked about how, have you realized in Nigeria when you have a business and you could be running like a furniture shop and then mm. someone says, okay, do you have diffusers? Then you'll quickly go and run to get the diffusers. Yeah. So someone commented here that Nigerians are the kings and queens of being jack of all trades. I'm telling you. And it's true. That is so true. Even and someone, somebody even tried to say that in my business as well. Anyways. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. But actually, I'm moving into my new house. I've realized that's a problem and you have to fight against it. Mm. If you've got a problem, like a specific problem, like for example, you know how you can meet people that want to clean and fumigate? Mm. No. Go to the fumigation specialist and, and go to the cleaning specialist. Don't get one a random artisan that just says, yeah, I can do both. Because mm-hmm. they're not going to do it. In with, the right way. Yeah. Mm. Because they haven't got the education and the science behind what they're doing. Mm. So... I've realized when it comes to things like managing my home, I don't want someone who's a jack of all trade. I want someone who is, a, more specialist, yeah, yeah, you are a carpenter, mm. you are a plumber, you are like a, um, you know, an AC guy. Mm. I like people that know what they're doing very well. So that jack of all trades things, you have to be careful because no Nigerian is going to tell you no. Mm. Everybody's hungry. Yes, yes, they want money. So yeah. if you ask them for something, they're going to be, they're going to say, yeah, yeah, I can do yeah, it. Yeah, true. No, no, it's very important to, to, to stay clear away from Jack of all trades. So somebody commented recently, any commented recently, um, just yesterday, she was like, Shalawa will get sick leave the first day in NYSC camp after seeing the rooms and the toilets. <laughs> that is so true. Shout out to any. Is it any you said? Shout out to Eddie. You know her very well. Right? <laughs> you know her very well. Oh, see, Eddie, like, have you been she watching me? She would pack and go. <laughs> Ghana would go. Everything. She would, just, she would just pack and leave. Like, she cannot deal with any inconvenience. I'm telling you, that type of stuff could just make me question whether I want to live or not. Like, just literally being in that kind of environment that makes my skin itch. Nah, if, if, I want to hear people's story about NYC camp. That would be a we're, very we're, good we're episode. We're about to engage on that journey and I, I want, I want to are. know some stories of your NYC camp. So if you have any questions, crazy stories about nyc camp uh, or your your experience during that process please comment in the section yeah yeah that that, that would be uh, uh that would be funny very too, yeah. very helpful to hear your nyc stories there's a link in the in the video for you to send in your stories for us to share yeah so so another thing guys we always want to kind of keep engaged so please if you have any interesting stories that you want us to read out or questions questions or anything send it in yes how can they send it in by the way so there's a link in the description box for stories and questions you just go down to the link either on the spotify or on the youtube video mm. it's from the i move back website and you go and fill out and we'll literally discuss um everything that you've you've put in there okay link in the description guys yeah, no, nah, I've, uh, I mean, there's other people saying, saying random things. I mean, there's, there's less of you guys engaging on um, some of the interesting things that it might be worth you guys seeing what they do. Somebody commented on the YouTube video for Samuel's video. I think they were responding back to me because you know how I called this place a mosquito ridden ghetto. Oh, what did they say? So they were like, JD Sykes, shout out to you. He was like, mosquito ridden, mosquito ridden ghetto. Yo, allow it, famalam. Where are you, Ikorodu? <laughs> or is it Iyaba? <laughs> Iyaba? No, I was in Victoria Island. Island we get mosquitoes real. there too, there's baby. Two mosquitoes. <laughs> ah, there's mosquitoes there's everywhere in Lagos. <laughs> So, so somebody called Samuel, uh, one of our guests, an anti-vaxxer. Okay, okay. Uh, which, which was a debate. And then Samuel went back and forth with him. His name is uh, Fine Daddy. Hi. <laughs> Nigerians. Somebody, somebody followed me the other day, Sugar Zaddy of Lagos. I had to even reject. I don't even want you to follow me. Because what are the, what is going on in this country? Shout out, shout out to Fine Daddy. <laughs> so Samuel and Fine Daddy were going back and forth. They uh, so, well, I'm a pro-life. And this means anti, um, I'm anti-vax then 
guess I am. So I think they were going back and forth about um, having the vaccine and not having the vaccine. Um, you can read more about it in the comments. It's kind of a long debate, but uh, if you look at our, our Instagram page under the uh, Samuel episode uh, short, you should be able to kind of see in uh, real. I mean, you should be able to kind of see the comments there. And um, then of a couple yeah. of people find that find that very interesting. Uh, that was a fantastic well. episode. They find that very even on even on the YouTube here, somebody commented. I think we were talking about education. I said education is uniform. It's not learning. It's mm. conforming to social norms. That's interesting. I like that. I like that comment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they try to, but I mean, we complain a lot here. What do you think, their man in China? Have you seen what it's like to go to school in, in China? No, the kind of like operations, the military drills they do, like really? the thing they really. Uh, are very strict, strict yeah. in how they... So sometimes in the Western world, mm. I think we're so much more liberal. It's very never liberal, as bad yeah. as we try to make it out to be. Uh, yeah, very true. Let that. me just read a couple from London. Oh, you episode. know what I would like to eat today? A nice burger, you know? No, honestly, yeah, we're going to chop. Even <laughs> our guests, well, somebody's already messaged me saying, I thought you said I thought you said 130, Mrs. Prop. <laughs> yeah, we're leaving. They're ready you. for us to go and eat. So... uh better bring money out this is chasing lots of time. Yeah. <laughs> so, um... Somebody commented, yeah. Hmm. Our male guests only look at the guy while talking. Why? That's a good point. Yeah, that was the Larry episode, right? Yes. Yeah. I don't know why. Maybe because I was asking too many questions. So, I mean, honestly, I don't. I understand why you're asking because I mean, just just look you know what at saying, this. Like, what, look what at this. Going on here? <laughs> who, who would want to say I on, on, on S right now? No, but you know what it is. I don't think it's anything that deep. I, nah. I, I think it's. Um, I don't. I don't even notice it. Actually. I didn't notice as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. but honestly, guys, it's a quick one. It's a quick one. Yeah. Well, so you, 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 the reason why we want you guys to kind of keep engaging with us, so sending your comments, we'll, 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 t- we'll tap into it once in a while. Um, ask your questions, put your dilemmas, put your stories. We want to hear your stories. We want to hear the things going on. Yeah. Uh, and we want to hear, especially for people who's moved back. Like, let's see, hear your your stories and uh, come on, come on, on the pod. Let's talk. Do says. All right. Hey guys, we've got some good news for you today. Fantastic news. Yes, because I can't wait. we've been hearing everything you've been saying mm-hmm. and we've settled down over here and now we are proud to announce the IMB concierge service. Whoop. Yeah. So our concierge service really would help you guys to support you with any problem you have in Nigeria. If you want to start up a business, you need some research done, IMB is here to help you. If you want to see your properties to be checked up on, we can also support you with that. Just anything you need. What are the things that the IMB concierge service can do? Personal shopping. Woo! You know, if you've got real estate investments, you need someone to check. Have you got a shop here that you're managing from abroad? We can go and check it out for you. Do you want us to buy you a gift? There's so many things that we can do because we know it's so hard to find people to trust from abroad that's true and you can reach the imb service on yes. our whatsapp number yes which is plus two three four nine zero four five four nine nine eight four six